So good morning, everybody. I would like to welcome you to the second day of the European Stroke Organization Conference in Basel. As you probably know, we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of the conference this year. But we also have another birthday today. We are celebrating the 10th anniversary of ESO East. And it's my great pleasure to welcome here my guests. We have uh, Professor um, Robert Mikulik, uh, we have Professor Anna Bersano, and we have Lina Balaidoimiu, uh, and the, these, uh, they are my hosts today. So uh, let me start with uh, ESO East and the anniversary of ESO East. Robert, you have been the man from the very beginning with the project ESO East. Please tell us briefly what is ESO East and what has been achieved during the last 10 years? Yeah, so the ESO East was established to improve the quality of stroke services in Eastern European countries. And the perception was that Eastern Europe is lagging behind in quality behind the Western Europe. That's why it started in, in East. Well, now actually we have the SAPI, right? So now we are trying to improve the stroke care quality everywhere. But, uh, but truly, I mean, ESO East was, you know, in, in many aspects needed uh, this program uh, so it started 10 years ago. The first uh, meeting was in Glasgow, uh, the same as the first ISOC. And uh, ISO East was built on three pillars. It was built on quality monitoring, on uh, developing some human infrastructure to allow for networking and for trading. So, yeah, so, so these are these three pillars and I can talk about each of them if you want or... Yes, so uh, please, uh, what do you think from your perspective, what were the main achievements during the last 10 years, you know, at uh, ESO East? Yeah, so I think that, the, th that first we created a, a network of, of experts from, you know, 26 Eastern European countries. So it's yeah. about actually half of the European countries. Um, so there is, a, there is a governance model, there is a steering committee, then uh, there is a um, um, group of the national delegates who coordinates the activities at the national level, and the national delegates were encouraged to create the steering committee at the national level. So that's, that's really, it's achievement by itself because these people get to meet, they talk, they ch exchange the experience. Uh, uh, and it's really powerful, you know, to learn from the others, it motivates you and so on. Then I think that the next biggest achievement is the fact that we established a quality monitoring yes. across stroke yes. centers. Yes. In, in, and we started in Eastern Europe and you know, now actually the tool that we develop in Eastern Europe is actually used around the world, which is amazing. Um, and it's on no, not only the tool, also, it's also the uh, experience that we learned from the ESOIST activities that now we are using for the benefit of the, uh, you know, of, of yes. the regions you know, around the world. So, so we, when we started, we really didn't know anything about the quality, and uh, uh, so we developed a rescue platform. Now, you know, many many hospitals participate to that, and I think it's it's really useful because, you know, it's online. You get everything online. You know how you perform as a stroke center. You can see where your gaps are in the quality. When you change something in your hospital, yes. you basically immediately see how this is reflected you know, in the data, and then, I mean, you can benchmark your country against the other country. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, I think this is great, and, uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the third pillar was, was education, and I think that we did a lot of educational activities, uh, um, um, simulation training. Yes. Just so just if, if I may uh, yeah. interrupt you here, yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, education is, is, an important, is an important point and I think uh, we would like also to welcome uh, Professor Valeria Casa who is also joining us uh, in this uh, TV session this morning. Education is an important stuff and uh, you also mentioned the simulation courses. So uh, Lina, you were very much involved in simulation. Could you briefly wrap up a little bit who is the target um, audience you try um, to, to, to educate with your simulation programs? Everyone involved in stroke care should be included in simulation training, right? From the nurses or the paramedics or the doctors, juniors or seniors, and of course the radiologists. And uh, I, I participate in this ESO simulation committee. Robert did also uh, participate uh, in uh, the last few years. And Yesterday we, we also had three simulation workshops 
that uh, I was very happy to see that they were fully booked. And uh, there was one or two participants uh, presenting in two or three of okay. the sessions. Yes, so okay. they were yeah. very much eager to learn to simulate. And uh, we were talking with uh, Barbara Casola also in the ESO to um, organize in the future, probably during uh, 2025, a dedicated simulation school. Yes. Uh, but if I may, uh, I think in, in, in the past, the simulation course were mainly uh, focused on ischemic stroke, right? Yeah. And intravenous thrombolysis. Do you also have um, courses? on endovascular therapy, and do you also have uh, courses on hemorrhages? Because of I think course. that's the next frontier. Exactly. Yesterday we had also a scenario with uh, an intracerebral hemorrhage attributed to anticoagulant treatment. Yes. So the patients need to have this bundle of care and get engaged with that. And uh, we're also thinking about stroke mimics and uh, cerebral venous thrombosis, right? Yes, absolutely. So uh, Valeria, if I may ask you, um, Coming back again to ESO East, which is also celebrating the 10th anniversary this year, um, there is now also the Stroke Action Plan uh, in Europe. And how do you see the interaction in between ESO East and SAPI? Because, I mean, obviously SAPI is for the whole Europe, but I think in some ways they, are, they must be connected. Uh, thank you for the question. The, the issue is that we Europe is broad, is different, and in the way we divided Europe, south, uh, western, eastern. Um, so what we see, and we started, we have the, uh, when we started at uh, ESO East, we create the network, as Robert said. There were um, countries, some were working together, Slovakia, uh, Czech Republic, other were feeling outside. There was a kind of no trust between the different countries and we didn't find many colleagues who speak, spoke English so we created the, the, the network, we selected younger colleagues, they, they had the possibility to grow and uh, with the quality monitoring we start the work that SAPI is doing now okay. and when you look what is SAPI doing, the most active part is Eastern Europe because yes. there's already something in place there's, um, and also the willingness to accept because when you go to Western countries it's very difficult because they say we are already what 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 can we learn? <laughs> we are already there. Yeah. But it's not true because we see after COVID we have we are fighting Absolutely. to maintain our system Absolutely. because stroke we don't have stroke at the highest level of the agenda. And this is something for us unacceptable. It's the second cause of death. It's the first uh, the second cause of disability in, in, in adults. So something that it's absolutely not acceptable that we are still not there. So, so eventually we need ESO West. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, because I think you fully, I fully agree. I think one of the main priorities is not only to, uh, um, to improve, but also to keep what we have achieved. So, Anna, um, it's a, a big pleasure that you're here. So from your perspective, in terms of education, what can we do more as the European Stroke Organization? Where do we have uh, to invest? Okay, um, I think that the role of uh, the Education Committee of the ESO is fundamental according to the Stroke Action Plan because uh, uh, to have uh, secondary prevention strategies, uh, treatment for stroke, uh, and uh, continuous update uh, on uh, these things uh, as well as uh, rehabilitation and contact with the government and. Uh, um, stakeholder uh, is very important uh, the awareness of the problem uh, and uh, the awareness of stroke uh, in uh, East country in West countries and uh, to be updated and uh, we are working on the at a different level uh, at the moment uh, East step uh, that is a yes a platform uh, online platform where uh, we can find every kind of uh, highlight uh, and content updated content uh, of stroke uh, is very important uh, and uh, we have to, to work a lot on this platform because uh, another possibility is to link to national societies of uh, every country to have the possibility to update also presentation of uh, other conferences and, uh, and the other, uh, other uh, action uh, plan uh, regarding the education, uh, regarding this uh, program that are very important mostly for young uh, fellow of department to department yes. uh, visit. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, for instance, there, there was uh, an opening towards uh, Ukrainian during the, the, the period of the war and uh, there are many, many fellows from East that apply to the, this program or the other 
new pro quite new program is the emerging leading program that uh, allow to to attend uh, conferences and uh, absolutely could you please uh, because i think some of the uh, people from the audience they do not know what is emerging uh, leader program really is could you brief uh, briefly uh, explain to the audience uh, what that's really about yes is is a program that uh, allow to to people uh, three people uh, to attend uh, different uh, courses uh, of the ISO, uh, for instance, uh, um, the summer school, uh, the winter school, and uh, so you have the possibility to attend uh, high-level courses uh, that uh, can uh, can improve uh, uh, your awareness of, of stroke. And uh, uh, people uh, also can uh, implement uh, what uh, what uh, they learn. In, in uh, their own country. This is very important because people are really motivated to attend these courses to develop something in uh, its uh, in, uh, own country. Thank you so much. So, um, coming back again to the, the whole programs of the European Stroke Organization, and I, I mainly talk about the, uh, uh, the action plan and uh, ISO East. Uh, Valerio, you, you have always been a visionary in the society and you have you know, launched a lot of these programs. So what do you think, what are the next steps where the ESO has to go? Mm. That's a good question because when you have many <coughs> things on your plate, you have to, you have to choose. And um, I strongly believe in implementation, you know. We can write the best guidelines. We do this. I think ESO has excellent guidelines, great system and so on. But without implementation, we will not go nowhere. So um, a society like ESO, with all the skills, you, uh, inside there are the best researchers, clinicians. But we have, to share, we have to learn to share. And SAPI, for me, is still the flagship program yeah. of ESO, and this includes education, this includes ESO East. I think ESO East started because there was nothing, but now keep it as a model. We create a model, mm -hmm. and a model which can be a pilot model, as Robert said, also for many other uh, continents, because it's so structured. And if you, in a um, in homogeneous area like Europe, almost homogeneous area, if you create a model, then you this can work. And to see some results, it's easy to say, okay, you wrote a wonderful document, no, this uh, um, European action plan, okay, who cares, this is some good people, good wills, but then the hard work is to structure. Yeah. If our, without doing this, the best science will be sterile. You will sit there among yourself, change your discussion about the guidelines, but it will not be implemented in, in a broader population. And we know there are plenty of good scientific papers. If you apply the guidelines, you have better outcome. So it's not that we are sitting because we are great, we are the good scientists of the world of writing guidelines. We are changing the outcome of the patients. I fully mm. agree. So uh, Robert, you are uh, you know, from the pioneer generation as well. And now, but you also know what the hurdles of implementations are. And from your perspective, why we still are lacking behind in the treatment of stroke, not only in Eastern Europe, but in whole Europe. What is the main reason? What is the main hurdle? Well, I guess it will be country to country specific and hospital to hospital specific. I think this is not the maybe right question. I think really the question is how to, how to change it. So it's about kind of change management. And I'm a strong believer in, in quality improvement, quality control, looking at the data. So I think that the, that the question is, what is the hurdle to have this in place? Mm -hmm. And the hurdle is that, that truly we are, for example, lacking the manpower to collect the data. So yes. we need to automate this process. Yes. So if we achieve automation, basically you would have to do nothing and then you will get everything what we have now. That would be a big change. Okay. So I'm, I'm I think that the technology will help us, yeah. um, you know, with the artificial intelligence, natural language processing, and, and so on, you know, changing the unstructured to structured text, and so on, you know, robotic process automation, and the things like this will, will actually help us with the implementation. 
Great. Mm -hmm. So coming back now to this, uh, again back to the conference, um, you, we had the first uh, day yesterday, now today we have another uh, large clinical trial session, we have a presidential session. So what are you expecting uh, or what are the highlights of the day for you today? Yeah, I was very happy to <coughs> see that actually there are two large clinical trial sessions, right? Mm -hmm there were many large trials submitted as abstract, so it was a very good decision by Carlos Molina to have another dedicated session to large clinical trials alone. So we are going to see major trials, both at 8.30 and at 10.30 uh, <laughs> as well, right? And um, I'm very eager to listen to them, such as the original trial, or also trials dedicated to dementia using automated uh, mobile phone applications, yeah. coming to the technology that uh, exactly. uh, yes. we were talking about. And uh, we have major, major trials, so I would very much like to, to see about them. Fantastic. Anna, what will be your highlight of the day, or what are you looking forward to? Uh, uh, for, uh, for today, yes, uh, for today. Uh, I will follow surely the, the section of clinical trial and uh, today I will have a lot of uh, <laughs> <laughs> meeting, uh, step meeting for improvement yes. of the platform and uh, today there will be also the, the section of uh, inflammation and stroke and I will participate with CIA, uh, CIA uh, RI. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm um, very, very interested in the field of uh, intracerebral hemorrhage, as you told before, and, uh, and also to the um, cerebral uh, amyloid angiopathy. Mm -hmm. It's an emerging uh, don't concept. For, don't forget the guidelines. Today is the guidelines yes, session. The Posterior guidelines. Yes. infarct, <laughs> recanalization, uh, BFO. So, yeah. so I, I think it's conflict yeah. of interest. Obviously, <laughs> yes. So what will be the highlight of your day? Yeah, it's a large clinical trials. And a lot of meetings. A lot of meetings, yes. yes. And the yeah. party. And the party, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget the party. <laughs> so, uh, Valeria, 10 years after the first ESOP conference, what do you think is the the highlight of this society or of this con of these conferences of the you know the last past uh, 10 conferences? What do you think makes ESOP unique? ESOG is unique for the high level of science, which is, it's clear. But ESOG is unique for democracy and inclusion. So you feel that young people have the chance to present. Women, we started, there were 30% of women, okay? Then now you see it's 40, it's growing. We see that our young researcher really presented, uh, have the, the chance to present, to be involved. and. This is for me in such challenging time where democracy seems not so appealing to see that democracy is working, then this is for me the test last 10 years, especially in science, that it works, it's, it's a great success. I mean, these are excellent words for the end of this TV show. Uh, I could not uh, agree more what you have said. So I would like to thank you all for coming, for joining. Uh, and please uh, don't forget ESOC 2025. Uh, so I would like to thank you for listening and enjoy the conference. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.